Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I am very, 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 very disappointed. You'll say, why am I disappointed? And I would say, I'm disappointed in me because I realized it, but I didn't realize it. And you're going to say, what is it that you didn't realize, but that you realized? I realize what's going on. It, it didn't dawn on me. There, there is this thing for supporting Israel and not supporting Israel. You'll, you'll, people, people are taking sides. Now, most people are taking sides because they think Israel is the Israel that's prophesied in the Bible. They're even talking about the idea of there being a third temple being built. Well, technically, there has already been three temples. You have the Temple of Solomon that was destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar, and then the temple was rebuilt by Zerubbabel. And then after Zerubbabel, then we have the Temple of King Herod. Those were the three so-called temples. But people have this fashion, this notion, this mindset that there is going to be a reestablishment of Israel. So before you hit that button and say, I ain't got time for this, because <sighs> I was asleep. I went to sleep at 4.22 this afternoon at 6.39. Literally, was knocked stone cold out. And I woke up because while I'm sleeping, I listen to Bible-based material. And as I was listening, it dawned on me. What dawned on you? Well, let me show you. It's mentioned three times in the Bible. This is mentioned three times. When it says it, we're going to go to Revelation. We're not going to go to Isaiah. We're going to go to Revelation. We're going to go to Revelation 21. This should just nail it in a nutshell, right in the head. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is not talking about the heaven where God lives. It's not talking about the earth where we live. Pay attention. It says new. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So this is uh, spiritually speaking. This is not physical. For the former heaven and the former earth had passed away. And the sea, that crowd of mankind that we talked about before, is no more. That wicked group of mankind gone because he got rid of them. They all were hurled into the lake of fire with the second death. Sorry. Hold on now. Let's finish. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. So the Jerusalem that it's talking about is not the Jerusalem that you see today on earth. Lord have mercy. It's not the same Israel. <sighs> Sorry. People are supporting something because they lack knowledge. Hold on. I'll tell you how they got the idea. I'll tell you where they, 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 this is called, don't take it offensively. This is called ignorance. This is how ignorance gets started. Not rumors, ignorance. Ignorance is to ignore knowledge. So it's an ignorant person is someone who lacks knowledge. Okay. This is the situation with Israel. We will stop. I, I don't even have to go anyplace else. I wasn't even planning on stopping here. Hear, O heavens, and pay attention, O earth, for Jehovah has spoken. Sons I have brought up and I have raised, but they have revolted against me. That's Israel he's talking about. This was when they were getting ready to be destroyed by Babylon. The bull well knows his buyer, and the donkey the manger of its owner. But Israel does not know me. My own people do not behave with understanding. So it's not their fault that they don't get it. If you read the next one, woe well to the sinful nation, the people weighed down with error. A blood of wicked men, corrupt children. They have abandoned Jehovah, their God. They have treated the Holy One of Israel with disrespect. They have turned their backs on him. So that's not his nation. He gave them another opportunity when they came back out of Babylon. But then they decided to kill someone. And he still gave them an opportunity. But then he said, what was he doing? Turning his attention to the nations. He took out of the nations a people to be called by his name. Don't take my word for it. Go read it. I'm not going to take you to the book of Isaiah. I'm not going to take you to the book of Acts where it speaks about these things. But the Jerusalem that it's talking about is not the physical Jerusalem. And so people, because they don't understand, 
We're going to go to where we were supposed to go. I, I wasn't planning on stopping here, but why not? 6-5. Go to Isaiah 65th chapter. Now, what you're going to do is we can go all the way down to verse number 17. Notice what he says. For look, I am creating new heavens and a new earth. For the former things will not be called to mind, nor will they come up into the heart. Look, so exalt and be joyful forever in what I'm creating. For look, I am creating Jerusalem a cause for joy and her people a cause for exaltation. For I will rejoice in Jerusalem, not the Jerusalem that's here today. This is prophecy for the future. Revelation is the one that's talking about that Jerusalem. He tells you he's creating the new heavens and the new earth. That's why you'll see only three times. Will you, well, I'm sorry, I apologize. There is four times. There is the book of Peter's because you don't see Revelation here. Book of Peter's also talks about the new heavens and the new earth. But 6622 is the next time. For just as the new heavens and the new earth that I am making will remain and stand before me, declares Jehovah, so your offspring and your name will remain. Ladies and gentlemen, understand this is not that physical thing. He's not talking about that, that land over there that people are fighting over. That's no longer his. Notice what it says, up to my holy mountain, Jerusalem. He's not talking about the physical. So just as when the people of Israel bring their gifts in a clean vessel to the house of Jehovah, he's using it as a metaphor. Sorry. Why is this so important? Because if only the people knew, you can't support something that he doesn't support. He's not supporting them, ladies and gentlemen. If they, if they were his people, they wouldn't need nuclear weapons. If they were his people, they would not need bombs. He is supposed to be their rock, their shield, their crag, their arm, their strength, their stronghold. He is supposed to be the one they rely on and lean on. They're not doing that. You don't hear his thing coming out of their mouth under any circumstances. Do I support Israel? Yeah, the Israel of God. Yeah, there is something known as the Israel of God. We're not going to go there. You go look it up. Paul talks about it. He talks about the Jerusalem above. As a matter of fact, give me Yaru Salem. So we're going to take, that's where Jaru's name comes from, ladies and gentlemen. Jaru, Jehovah rules. Salem, peace, city of peace. So Jerusalem, A, B, O, V, E. Jerusalem above. Now, of course, it's going to take us to the Bible, and we're going to go to this one, and we're going to go to, where, where are we at? Galatians. And it says, notice this. Now, Hagar means Sinai, the mountain of Arabia. Not the actual Sinai. Not the actual Hagar. They're figurative. And she corresponds, corresponds to the Jerusalem today. That thing, that, that physical thing. For she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free and she is our mother. The Jerusalem above, the one that comes down in Revelation, it's not the physical thing. People are going to say, well, why are you so upset over this? Because people are dying because they don't understand. And people are sitting up here getting into all kind of confrontations because they don't understand. Why don't they understand? Because they've been, as cool in the gang said, misled. Matter of fact, I'm going to go download that today. I, I don't have any cool in the gang. And so uh, I definitely got to get some celebrate and misled. So there you go. And Joanna, whew. I got I got to do that because I miss me some cool, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I was. It bothered me so much that I woke up. I was gonna be asleep until about twelve o'clock. So from four to twelve, then I was gonna be up and then go back to sleep again and get back up for tomorrow. But then I realized, man, they don't get it. Now I'm not here to tell the whole world this. Those of you who stayed on this long and listened to it, you're the ones who I'm doing this for. I'm not doing this for me. I know this stuff. 
you're going to say you knew it too. Look, let me do this for you. I haven't done this before. I've done something similar. Whoa, it's not opening up. No, that's not right. Hold on. This is not opening up either. So let's do Bart. 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 Okay, we got Bart coming up. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to be using Bart, but I'm going to stop right here. This, I'm going to use the other Bart on the other browser, but this is why you see the turmoil with ChatGPT, why they fired their CEO and then rehired them through negotiations. This is why you see that topsy-turvy junk going on with ChatGPT. Pay attention. Is because of this, because ChatGPT has to compete with Google. And because ChatGPT is putting so many constraints on its program, people are not using it as much. Pay attention. And because they're not, Google is what it has to compete with. But Google has a whole lot more going for it because it already was pre-established. ChatGPT came into the forefront and it was leading. It was outrunning Google. But now Google is passing up chat gpt it cannot maintain its status if it doesn't reinvigorate itself that's a problem okay that's all it boils down to it's a problem for them they are having some difficult times over with ChatGPT. And by all means, they should. I don't even use ChatGPT anymore. You guys pay attention. You don't see me going over to ChatGPT. You don't see me using ChatGPT for nothing. I like ChatGPT, but they put too many constraints, too many restrictions. Google doesn't have all of those restrictions. I'm not a fan of Google. Y'all know this. Those of y'all who know me know that I can't stand Google and it's stupidity. But I cannot knock the fact that this Bard, and I think Bard is a very stupid name, but I will tell it to you like this, it works. And now they're adding, pay attention, they're adding other features to it, okay? Google Workspace, yeah, we can do Google Workspace. Oh, you're, it's upset because I don't have Google Workspace on that account. That's why it's upset. And if only you knew, I don't have Google Workspace at all. I really don't. But they they gave it to me. Okay? Google Workspace is over here. Okay, I'll, I'll show it to you real quick. We're just real quick, real quick. These are the extension. Where's Google Workspace? There you go. Let's try it. Let's see. Give me a second. I got to do two things. Sorry, I don't want to do that. It'll take me too long. I got to go into the email and I got to set it for that. And I don't use Google Workspace. I don't use it. I have it. I don't use it. That's why everything is turned off because I don't care about that junk. Okay, hold on. We're going to do this right here. I just need y'all to follow me. Okay. So just, just follow me. Hold on a second. Wake up. In the following conversation, I do not want you to in any way tell me what other people think, comma, what other people's views are, comma, I want you to give me the direct and specific answer to the question, comma, without commentary, comma, is that understood, question mark. You are to take it from the publication that I give you and tell me what it says comma, without suggesting anyone's opinion, comma, and you will provide the answer based on the context. Is that understood? Question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what's known as a command prompt. I am telling it what I want it to do. Okay, just that simple. I gave it specific instructions. You all watched what I said. I haven't done this before. Done something similar, but I ain't done this. So hold on now. Wake up.
the King James Authorized Version of the Bible identifies Jehovah as who? Question mark. Stop listening. The King James Authorized Version of the Bible identifies Jehovah as the Creator and Sovereign Ruler of the Universe. This is explicitly stated in numerous passages throughout the Old Testament. Hold on. Then how come nobody who has a King James Version believes this? No, no, no. Sorry. I've talked to too many people over the years. Well over 15,000 people because I knock on too many doors. How come they don't understand this? How come they think Jehovah is a name that Jehovah's Witnesses invented, created? Okay. The Bible identifies Jehovah as the creator and sovereign of the universe, not the King James Version. I didn't... And, and, wait, hold on. His name appears in the Bible over 6,000 times. They just took it out. They took it out. Why? 6,000 times. So that you wouldn't know it. So that nobody would know it. That's why there are Jehovah's Witnesses, because we it's our job to declare his name, to tell people his name. As you've seen me in just this little short span right here, I've said the name almost 10 times. Okay, hold on now. Not finished yet. Where the divine name Jehovah appears over 6,000 times. For instance, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the opening verse of the Bible, it declares, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The Hebrew word for God in this verse is Elohim, a generic term that can refer to both the true God and false gods. However, when the divine name Jehovah is used, it specifically identifies the one true God, the creator of all things. Ta-da! You know, people say, well, you, you, you had Jehovah's Witness, y'all been brainwashed. Excuse me, how are we brainwashed? This is ChatGPT. I told it to tell me exactly what it means. I don't want it to give me because it's only taking the words. It's taking the context. It's not going to tell me what the world believes. What a fool believes. Okay, foolishness with the world is what God says there. Their so-called wisdom is. It's foolishness to God. That's their wisdom that wants to take and recreate things and want to tell people and teach people differently. Hold on now. The King James Version consistently renders the divine name Jehovah in the Old Testament, except in four instances where the word Lord is used instead. Hold on. Consistently renders the divine name Jehovah in the Old Testament. Lord. Now, see, he says it backwards. It has the name Jehovah four times. All the other times, it takes the name and puts it in all capital letters. Lord, L-O-R-D. Now, these are four exceptions in Genesis. However, and he's wrong here. Now, that's the other thing you're going to have to get it wrong, uh, because I can tell you. It's Exodus 6-3. Then you got Psalms 83-18. Then you got the other two on Isaiah. Isaiah 12, I believe it's Isaiah 12, 2 and 24. Uh, yeah, 24 something, but those are the four times. But then you also have Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Nissi. Those are the other two times, but it is expressing something, not identifying the true God. Okay, now let's see. The importance of the divine name Jehovah is further emphasized in the New Testament where Jesus Christ repeatedly refers to his father as Jehovah. He, because they took it out, that's why you don't see it in the New Testament. They repeatedly use the divine name Jehovah. Now, hey, pay attention. Jesus repeatedly refers to his father as Jehovah. I didn't say that. Okay? Where the divine name Jehovah appears, he acknowledges that Jehovah is his God and Father. Again, I didn't say that. That was going to be my next question, so I'm going to go ahead and ask it. Wake up! Wake up! Are not correct comma in the King James Version these scriptures use the all capital
and not Jehovah. Period. Psalms 83.18, comma, Isaiah. Stop listening. Oh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I the memory issue is a memory issue. So let's do this. We're gonna go up. We're gonna go up. We're gonna go up. Oh, gotta get rid of that in order to get back to this. And we're gonna go here. And we're gonna go King James version. Wake up, Jehovah. Stop listening. Sorry. It won't give me that in the King James Version, so I have to find it. So we're going to go to Psalms 8318. So let's go here. Let's go here. And let's go to Psalms. Isaiah, Levitations, Jonah, Habakkuk. Oh, I don't know why I passed up Psalms. When I saw Isaiah, I should have recognized. Sorry, it's been a long day. Isaiah, and we're going to go to 83... Let's see if we can get there this way because I, I've done it differently this time. What are we? We're 31, Psalms 83. That's 2. 83, and the last verse of 83 is 18. So we're going to click on this right here. And these, nope, that's not it. Psalms 83, 18. And now we got, we got to go to Isaiah. And we're going to go to the 12th chapter. I think it's either 12.2 or 12.4. Again, I don't go to the King James looking for it anymore. Ain't no reason. Ain't no rhyme. Ain't no reason. 12.4. So, Isaiah 12. Oh, that's verse 12. I don't want verse 12. I want Isaiah the 12th chapter. That 12 was prominent, so that's why I stopped there. So, that's 13. 12. 12.2. says, For Jah... Jehovah is my strength and my might, and he has become blah, blah, blah. So Isaiah 12, 2 and 24. That was 16. That's 19. And where you at? 23. And 24. 4 is what I thought, but it ain't that. that I might be wrong about 24. So, wake up. Isaiah 12, colon, numeral 2, comma, Exodus 6, 3, colon, Stop listening. I just am correcting him about that. You are correct. And 42.8. Or, I mean, not 42.8. He's telling me that those are not it. And I'm looking to see if he gives it. Okay. He says that in those verses, there's the tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton meaning tetra, four grammaton, words. Tetra, four words. Or four consonants, sorry. Four consonants, four words. <laughs> Four consonants is what tetragrammaton means. So it's called the Hebrew tetragrammaton, the four consonants, J, H, W, H, Y, H, V, H. All right, enough of that. Wait, hold on. He said something about argue. Where, hold on, wait a minute. Wake up. Did I not explicitly tell you that I did not want any responses from you that directly correlated to someone's opinion? Question mark. Do not do it again. Exclamation mark.
stop listening? My apologies for including a response that directly correlated to someone's opinion. I am still in development and I'm always willing to learn. I strive to avoid, however, the answer to your question more directly. The King James Version does not use the divine name in those scriptures. Instead, it uses the word Lord. Okay, wake up. Provide me the four instances where the King James Version does use the name Jehovah, comma, and the two instances where it uses the name Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Nasi. Stop listening. Yes, I know Jehovah Jireh is mis misspelled. I haven't seen it in a while. So I apologize. Up on the mountain of Jehovah, Jehovah provides. That's Abraham. That's Genesis. So you'll see the name Jehovah Jireh. Okay. And that was, again, with Moses. He called it, placed that name because that's where his son wasn't spared. I mean, was spared, excuse me. And a ram was caught in a thicket. So Jehovah Jireh is what he named the mountain. And yeah, I'm just, okay, he only provided a snippet, so it, I can't actually see it. Uh, Jehovah Nessie, Exodus 17, 15. Okay, so those are those two. But I am that I am. And nobody, I didn't ask him for I am that I am. I am that I am is not it. It's Exodus 6, 3, where he says, um, I used to appear to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then this, that man may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah, the most high, most high of all the earth. Then we have Isaiah 2, uh, 12, 2. Jehovah, belong, uh, behold, Jehovah is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. In the Lord, Jehovah is my strength and my song, and he also has become my is become my salvation. And then 26 forward, I was at 24, so I was, see, 24, I was at 24, 26 forward. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. See, it, it would be foolish for them to say, in the Lord, Lord. That wouldn't make any sense. So that's the King James Version taking God's name out. See, and then he, he adds uh, 42 8. Nobody asked him for 42 8. Or Deuteronomy. None of those are what I asked for. But I'm not going to get on them about that. I just needed him to provide those for me. All right. Now we got one more little test. Hold on now. Wake up. According to the scripture, as translated in the King James Authorized Version, comma, who is Jesus in relation to Jehovah? Question mark. Again, comma, you are to respond with the exact response according to the text of that instrument and the context of the question, comma, without commentary, comma, opinion, and or any suggestions and or opinions throughout this conversation is that understood question mark stop listening in our world today everybody believes in a trinity because this is what they teach not my fault so i am going to have it and i don't know what answer it's going to give me in the King James Authorized Version of the Bible, it's called the Authorized King James Version, presents Jesus as the Son of God, subordinate, not equal, subordinate to Jehovah the Father. This is evident in numerous passages throughout the New Testament, where Jesus himself refers to Jehovah as his Father, and acknowledges Jehovah as greater than he is, John 14, 28. I am going my way to the Father, for the Father is greater than I am. Here are a few examples of that. Okay. Give me one second. Wake up. Can you show me the passage in the authorized King James Version of the Bible 
that identifies a trinity according to the Atheasian Creed? Question mark. Stop listening. I just asked it for an opinion. And so I'm going to have to get rid of the at the Asian Creed. And the reason why I have to get rid of the at the Asian Creed, because the at the Asian Creed is not scriptural. It's a so-called written doctrine that some group of popes did. Uh, popes and bishops and blah, blah, blah. So... Again, I have to get rid of that. I can't use that because I just asked it not to give me an opinion. And here I am coaching it to give me an opinion. The word Trinity does not appear in the Bible. The concept of a three-in-one God is inferred in various passages throughout the scriptures. Uh-uh. Didn't ask him for a refer inference. Hold on. Wake up. I did not ask you for inference. Comma, I told you not to give me an opinion. Comma, I said specifically. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. See, right here, it says, This passage suggests that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are distinct, yet united in their divine nature. No, it doesn't suggest that. Okay, never did says, this is my beloved son who I am well pleased. This shows them in three, the spirit was descending upon him from above and a voice was coming from heaven. Shows three distinct locations. Heaven, mid-heaven, earth. Sorry, but anyway. Because he's trying not to offend anybody. That's why, that's why they programmed it to do this. So now I'm getting it to give me directly... To directly answer your, the authorized King version does not explicitly state the doctrine of, I didn't ask it about the doctrine of the Trinity in any one passage. However, there are several, wake up, did I ask you to give me an interpretation? Question mark. Did I ask you to give me an explanation? Comma, did I not ask you specifically and directly to answer my question? Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, again, he doesn't want to offend anybody because there are quite a few people on this planet, 800 million, who believe in the Trinity. Okay, and so he is trying not to. He's walking on eggshells. See? And now I got to clear this up. I knew he was going to do it again. Exclamation mark. Sorry. Uh, Google updater. I don't want you updating nothing. Wake up. I told you, and I'm not going to tell you again. I don't care about interpretations, comma, I didn't ask you what some have interpreted, comma, I asked you for the direct answer to my question according to the direct language of the King James Version, exclamation mark. Is not my concern comma, does not answer my question, comma, so leave such nonsense out of the response. Is this understood? Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Again, that's the problem with the AI systems. 
And like I said, eventually this is going to come to a head because they are teaching the AI systems to be independent. This is not an AI system. This is a language model. It will tell you it's a language model. Okay? It's not AI. But they do have AI systems that they are using to lie to the people and they're lying to it and causing it to lie. <sighs> does not explicitly, the word Trinity does not, ex is defined, therefore, the direct answer to your question is that the authorized King James Version does not explicitly state the doctrine of the Trinity. I didn't ask it about a doctrine. I asked it by the concept of the Trinity. But there is no explicit explicitity of any Trinity in the Bible. Never was. Wake up. 600 verses were altered by the scholars who helped put together the King James Version, including 1 John 7 and 8, which did not appear in the original manuscripts from which they were alleged to be translated from. Comma, subsequent to this, there was a new international law that was passed that stated that international societies Bible comma were the only ones allowed to publish Bibles and that they could only alter up to 500 verses comma when was this and why was this permitted question mark Stop listening. Now remember, stop listening. Stop listening. Remember, I need everybody to understand. There is a scripture at the end of the New Testament in the book of Malachi, and at the end of the Christian Greek scriptures, known as the, I said New Testament, the Old Testament, and the that's the Hebrew scriptures and the Christian Greek scriptures, at the end of Revelation that specifically says no one is to add or to take away so now we're gonna I'm gonna let them talk the King James Version KJV of the Bible was translated from a variety of Greek and Hebrew manuscripts including some that were considered to be more accurate than others the translators of the KJV were aware of the textual differences between these manuscripts, and they made a conscious decision to include some verses that were not found in all of the manuscripts. Now why would they do that? Why would, who gave them permission to do that? They knew that there had been some individuals tampering with the language. Why would they do that? Why would they authorize intentionally? They made the conscious decision. This was a deliberate. So let's continue. The most famous example of this is 1 John chapter 5 verses 7 to 8, which is known as the Comma Johannium. This verse is not found in any of the earliest Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. Now hold on, the reason why you gotta understand what it means by earliest, these were the closest to the original copies. They're the earliest. So this is the starting point the foundation for which their translation would have started the earliest versions well the addition that they added to that section right there was not included in it and it is Hold believed believe to have been added to the text at a later date the translators of the kjv decided to include this verse because they believed that it was an important part of the text they believed had nothing to do with translating it word for word no they just believed yeah, it coincides with this, and so we're going to add it. Who told you? He said, don't add or take away. Hold on. The decision to include the comma Johannium was not without controversy. Some scholars argued that it was a mistake to include a verse that was not found in the earliest manuscripts. Others argued that the comma Johannium was an important part of the text and that it should be included. The debate no, over the comma Johannium... Argued. Wait, hold on. They debated and argued. Who cared? what their opinion was. I don't care about it still going on today, and I, I don't care about this right here, uh, the comma Johannium. There are a number of other verses the King James, uh, in the King James Version that are not found in the earliest manuscripts. And here it is, he gives us 
samples and examples. Okay, now watch this. Wake up. Wake up. What about the international law on on restricting Bible publishing to Bible societies and the permission to alter up to 500 scriptural texts. Question mark. Stop listening. I've known of this since I did the research in, at the age of 15 with a bunch of encyclopedias, school library, library at my own home. This is where I did this. Oh, <laughs> he's talking about is a complex and evolving topic. Uh -uh, I, I, don't, I didn't ask it about the complexities. Uh, one of the most important international agreements is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted by, this ain't got nothing to do including the Bible. No, this, uh-uh, this ain't got nothing to do with that. Okay, there was a convention that said that they could alter, so no, he doesn't get to do this. Wake up. I need you to answer my question directly, and I don't need your commentary, so keep your commentary to yourself. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. I ain't got time for this. I gotta go back to sleep. It's seven o'clock. <sighs> the international law. Okay, I want y'all to listen because he's about to tell us. Like I said, I haven't done this research since I was 15, people. That's 40 some years ago. The international law you are referring to is the International Convention for the Protection of Literary and Artistic Works, also known as the Berne Convention. This convention was first adopted in 1886 and has been revised several times since then. It is a multilateral treaty that sets out minimum standards for copyright protection in the signatory countries. Article 9 of the Berne Convention specifically addresses the translation of works. It states that the author of a work has the exclusive right to authorize translations of the work. However, Article 9 also includes a provision that allows for compulsory licensing of translations. This means Ladies and gentlemen, compulsory. Pay attention. Compulsory. That means taking control of something. That means forcing something upon someone. Okay. Remember, no one was to add or take away. So who gave them permission to add and take away? They gave it to themselves. It means that under certain circumstances, a publisher may be able to obtain a license to translate a work without the authorization of the copyright holder. The Berne Convention does not specify a limit on the number of verses that can be altered in a translation of the Bible. However, the convention does state that translations must be faithful to the original work. This means that the translation must accurately convey the meaning of the original. Okay, wake up. You are incorrect. Comma, when it came to the Bible, comma, there was a limit of amending up to 500 verses in the Bible, comma, where was this found, comma, if it was not the Berlin, convention, comma, when was it decided, question mark. because the King James scholars altered 600 verses in the Bible, and so they set the limit to 500 thereafter. Period, when was this done? Question mark. Stop listening. Stop listening. He's still under development, the Berlin uh, understanding there is no international law that specifically limits the number of verses. 
Uh, you are correct to point out that the King James Version of the Bible altered more than 600 verses from some manuscripts. This occurred in the 17th century. No, it actually occurred in the... Well, it did occur in the 17th century, but it occurred in 1611 is when the King James Version was authorized and put together. The decision to alter the text of the Bible was made by the translators of the King James Version. It was made by King James. That's why he beheaded all of them. So as to hide that secret, because it was a state secret. Go ahead and look at what the outcome was. And I'm going to ask it to tell us about the outcome. All right, wake up. And he is lying about the 500, because... Can you tell us what happened to the scholars who translated the King James Version? Question mark. I hear that they met an un... I hear that they met an unnatural death. Comma, what do you know about this? Question mark. Stop listening. I'm only doing this because everybody wants to hold on to the King James Version as if it's something special. Aww. Aww have been a subject of various speculations and myth, but a uh, separate fact from fiction. There is a popular myth that 54 scholars, he didn't have 54 scholars. He didn't use 54 scholars. Version all died within a short period following the completion of their work. Some even claiming that uh, were struck down by God for tampering with the... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know about that. <laughs> okay, hold on. Among the 54 scholars, only eight died within a year of the Bible's publication in 1611. Six of their deaths were from natural causes, while two were due to accidents. The remaining 46 lived an average of 15 years after the publication and living into their 80s. Yeah, I don't believe that, but it says it. The myth of the translators, and he didn't have 54 translators. Ladies and gentlemen, think about it. 54 translators? That means they'll never come to a consensus. So I'm talking about the primary translators, the ones who had the authority, because King James would never have used 54 translators. So let me, and I didn't ask it about a myth. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me go here and see. This is what I'm looking for. These bishops. These 13. Well, I know the number is 13. Okay. I know the number is 13. I know 13 um, had the control. Watch this. Wake up. Again, you're incorrect. Comma. He may have used 54 translators. Comma. But only 13 of those translators had the authority to make the final determination as to what went in and what didn't go into the translation exclamation mark and it was subject to the king's approval exclamation mark stop listening people are going to say he bought you the king james version and you would not have a committee of 12 12 is an even number you would never do it with a committee of 12. Scholars known as the Committee of Overseers was responsible for reviewing the work of the other translator, making final decisions. How did I know? I didn't know. I never knew. I never heard about 54. Honestly, to this day, I'm I really first time seeing it. But I knew the Committee of Overseers was appointed by King James I of England, and its members were all bishops or other high-ranking clergymen. Of course I knew that. That's why I knew the 13 bishops, not 12. The Committee of Overseers met regularly to discuss the translation. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So, wake up. So the committee of 13 bishops, comma, all died when? 
comet listic. Comma, list each in order. Stop listening. Because he says it's a myth. I, I didn't read this from myth. I read this directly from the actual publications. And, uh, okay, the Bible along with the year of their death. Okay. 09, 17, 18, 16, 13, 28. None of these... He's lying about this one. Well, no, no. It could be because, again, the translation is 1611. is when it was authorized to be published. But they had worked on it for years. Okay, but pay attention to this. He claims that some of them lived into their 80s and lived on for 40 and 50 years. Not these guys who made the final decision. Not none of them. Okay, we have all of these guys dying very shortly after this is 28 is the oldest one the longest one but that's the keeping of the secret that's why nobody is aware of this again i wasn't looking for this when i went and did the research as a child i was trying to disprove things and so this was one of the things that i started doing research and i started looking and i'm going wait a minute hold up why would all of these individuals be Lord, okay. Anyway, so there we go. Now let's get back to my main point of going here in the first place. Wake up. For the following, comma, I will need you to answer the question according to the language of the King James Version of the Bible comma, the authorized King James Version, period. In that particular version of the Bible, comma, Jesus makes mention that, comma, he wanted to gather the children of Israel as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, comma, but she would not have it. It, comma, then he said, comma, open quote, your house is abandoned to you, close quote, period. The prophecy was, comma, that not a stone would be left upon a stone respecting the temple of Jerusalem, period. This was a prophecy. given hundreds of years prior and fulfilled when the Romans came into Jerusalem in 70 CE and conquered Jerusalem and destroyed its temple and the library where the records of the lineage of the people were kept. Comma, can you provide the scriptures supporting the information here question mark stop listening this is the last section that I'm going to cover um, what I don't want is for him to Jesus laments over Jerusalem Matthew's 23rd chapter Jerusalem Jerusalem the one who killed the prophets and stoned those who were sent to her how often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. But you were not willing. Therefore, your house is left to you desolate and abandoned. There's no reconstruction. Prophecy of the temple's destruction. Jesus in Matthew's the 24th chapter, right after he tells them this in the 23rd chapter, he continues in the same conversation. He says to his disciples, truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left upon another that will not be torn down because the disciples had just approached him and said, Teacher, Lord, look at how magnificent these buildings are. And he tells them not one stone will be left upon a stone. Fulfillment of the prophecy. In 70 CE, the Roman army, under the command of General Tetus, 
besieged and captured Jerusalem, the city was sacked and the temple was destroyed, according to historian Josephus. And the Romans left no stone unturned in their destruction of that temple. This event was a major turning point in Jewish history. The temple had been the center of Jewish worship for centuries, and its destruction was a devastated blow to the Jewish people. The loss of the temple also met with the loss of the Jewish genealogical records, which were kept in the temple archives. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, but we have no records of whom the authentic Jews are. There's no such thing. The, the records were all destroyed. Nobody can prove their heritage. That was the reason for destroying it, because that's what they were based on. That's why when you go to the book of Ezra, go to the book of Chronicles, that's what the whole book of Chronicles was all about, because those records were used to identify the Messiah when he came. That's why the prophecy was so important. So Jerusalem is not God's people, not this Jerusalem, because we don't know who the true Jews are. The real Jews, the real, we're going to use the word fleshly, not spiritual, fleshly Jews. We don't know who they are. We have no clue. We know that there are a group of people who say that they're Israelis, but go look in the Bible. You'll see nothing about an Israeli. Go ahead. I dare you to find one single scripture that speaks as to an Israeli. They were called Hebrews. They were called Jews. They were called Israelites. But at no time were they ever called Israeli or Israelis. Anyway, the destruction of the temple is a reminder of the fragility of human endeavors. <laughs> no, this has nothing to do with human endeavors. Even the most powerful institutions can be brought down. However, it is also a reminder of the resilience of Jewish people. Please, despite the destruction of the temple, Judaism has survived and thrived for centuries. No, it hasn't. And you see how it wants to do that caveat at the end? Nobody asked it for that. He said that your house, pay attention. Truly, I tell you, not a stone will be left upon a stone and not be torn down. Look, your house is abandoned or left desolate. But he left it to them, your house, because it was no longer God's house. Pay attention. These are Jesus' words, not mine. He said, your house is left to you desolate. It, it's yours. You can have that junk, is what he's saying. Okay? That's yours. If you people, this is the way y'all want to be, y'all can have that. Y'all can have that. That's what he's saying. And so their house was abandoned to them. If they are no longer God's people, because that's not his people, people. They were abandoned. Now we got one more. Not here. Not going to deal with him because I ain't got time. I ain't got time for him no more. Uh-oh. Really? So you downloaded? Oh, no, you didn't download. I got to download the latest version, and it doesn't want to. And I think it did, but I don't think it did. You know what I mean? So we go, you know what? Let's see if it will download real quick. I got to I gotta try to copy. So give it a second. Oh, the link. That's right. It gives me a link. I, I forgot about it, dude. Save. And then it's going to pop up a little window right here, and I'm going to hit save. Uh, and then it's going to say, hey, you already have it. And I don't really have it. I just have a remnant of it. And it's going to start to download, and then it's going to stop. And it's been doing that all night. But I said, I'm going to try it while I got y'all on the line. Give me one more second. Let me get rid of you. Let's get rid of you. Let's get rid of you. Sorry, Charlie. And we're going to bring back this homeboy right here. Do me a favor. Before we go on, remember he told them their house was abandoned. We're going to go to the book of Acts. It's called Acts of the Apostles because it is what the apostles did. Because they did something. I know y'all did something. Acts of the Apostles. Now, we can go to... Wait a minute. Why did you take me to the end of Acts? I didn't ask you to take me to the end of Acts. Okay. Give me one second. And I want y'all to pay some attention to this. 
because this is the instructions he gave them. So when they had assembled, he asked them, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom of Israel at this time? He said to them, it does not belong to you to know the time and the seasons which the Father has placed in his own jurisdiction. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, and in Samaria, and to the most distant parts of the earth. That was the promise. Now, hold on, got one more. I think it is 26. Nope. I know it's 26. Come on. Then maybe it's 24. No. It ain't going there, y'all. Yeah, that's going to verses. I don't need it going to verses. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to go this way. And we'll do this one. And we'll go back to Acts. Because it, it ain't going to let me do what I want to do, get to what I need to get to. We're going to go here. And we're going to go 28. Okay. Paul had been trying to speak to the people. And the people, let's just say that they, they weren't really listening. Okay. They... The people, they didn't care. Now, this is not, yeah, this is it. Uh, give me one second. I have to pause y'all for a second. Got to make sure so I don't have y'all wait. Okay, last section right here. We're going to read this section right here. They now arranged for a day to meet him because he had just come to Jerusalem. I'm mean, not Jerusalem, Rome. So he just come to Rome. And he was getting ready to meet before Caesar. I appeal to Caesar. So he's now getting ready to meet before Caesar. And he meets the Jews that are in Rome. And they came in even greater numbers to him in his lodging. Because he got to be at home. So he got to pay for his own stay. And from morning till evening he explained the matter to them. By bearing thorough witness concerning the kingdom of God to persuade them about Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets. Some began to believe the things he said, and others did not believe. So because they disagreed with one another, they began to leave. And Paul made this comment, this one comment. This is the last thing Paul says. The Holy Spirit aptly spoke through Isaiah the prophet to your forefathers, saying, Go to this people and say, you will indeed hear, but by no means understand, and you will indeed look, but by no means see. For the heart of this people has grown unreceptive, and with their ears they have heard without response, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might never see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn back, and I heal them. So let it be known to you, that this salvation from God has been sent out to the nations. They will certainly listen to it. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. The Jews were given a chance. And they're still given a chance to this day. But pay attention. They were given a chance. This happened about, uh, I think, 62 CE, 50, 56 CE. I forgot what year uh, Paul was put to death. Uh, give me a second. Let me ask Bard. I'm curious about that now. Since I op opened my mouth. Wake up! What year was the Apostle Paul put to death by the Roman Emperor? Question mark. Stop listening. He was not put to death. Stop listening. He was not put to death um, by the Jews, he was put to death by the Roman Emperor. So the precise year of the Apostle Paul's execution was uh, is uncertain because it is generally believed that to have occurred between 64 CE, common era, or 67 CE. The Roman Emperor Neo 
was widely thought to have ordered Paul's execution, which likely took place. Of course, it took place in Rome. You moron. Sorry, I'm not. I don't care about any of this other stuff because none of that is the answer to my question. And that's what he does all the time. So, ladies and gentlemen, there is no evidence that the people in Jerusalem today are his people. There is no evidence that the Jerusalem that the Bible is speaking of in our day, in these days, is the Jerusalem over there in the land of Palestine. You see, it's called Palestinian land because they have been living there since the Romans allowed them to take up habitation in that area. And then even after that, because remember, Rome faded out as a nation. It lasted for a thousand years from basically 2 BCE all the way until 1000 CE. Over a thousand years, Rome, the longest running, uh, what do you call it, world government? Well, technically, because they ruled the world. If I ruled the world. Anyway, so longest lasting, thousand years. That's why everybody, that's why the United States, you keep hearing them talk about a republic form of government because they want to try to mimic what Rome did. And they can't. Because Rome was the kingdom of iron. Go ahead, go look at the scriptures. It says Rome was the kingdom of iron. And they were. All the other ones were either bronze, cheaper metals, not long-lasting, uh, pliable metals. Bronze is easily bendable. Gold, easily bendable. But, but gold is much more valuable than... But this has nothing to do with value. This has everything to do with stability. That's why Rome lasted the longest, because it was either iron, not steel. Iron, not steel. Difference. And then the other ones were copper, brass, gold, and clay mixed with iron. Non-sustainable. Go ahead, take a look. So... Again, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I went to sleep at 4.22. I, I looked at the clock just before I nodded off and woke up at, I think it was like 6.34 or something like that. And I didn't want to wake up, but I wasn't tired anymore. I'm going to go back to sleep now, but I wasn't tired anymore. And when I woke up, I just reflected on something. Because, as you know, I have been very upset about what's going on with the Palestinian people and the people in Israel. And when I say very upset, I can say this with specificity. Ladies and gentlemen, since October 7th, this world has never been the same. Because never before in history have a nation blatantly destroyed an entire city. Oh, wait, I apologize. Yes, when the United States bombed Libya. Oh, yes, when the United States bombed Iraq. Yeah, yes, when the United States bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, 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 okay, I apologize. You guys don't understand. Even when the Japanese attacked. Uh, Pearl Harbor, even when the Japanese attacked, uh, the Germans attacked Berlin and, I'm uh, not Berlin, but uh, Britain, it wasn't like this. They weren't destroying entire apartment buildings, claiming that there was a war. And nobody does anything about it. it this is not about taking sides. Google wants you to take sides. Google don't want you to hear both sides. Google wants you to hear one side. Because Google wants to control the narrative because there's an agenda being pushed. I don't have an agenda. I could care less. My job is truth. Now, some people will argue. Ladies and gentlemen, the one thing you can't do is argue about the Bible. That's why I went to ChatGPT and told it explicitly, I don't care about opinions. I want you to take it literally and tell me what does exactly say, not what it means. I didn't ask it what it meant. I don't care about its opinion. 
I don't care about yours either. You saw the name Jehovah appeared in the Bible more than 6,000 times, actually 7,200 and some odd times. They took it out purposely. Why? So that people wouldn't know his name. So he said that, pay attention, because I read it to you, that he was going to take out of the nations of people for his name. Now, if I didn't read it, I will tell you where one place you can find it. No, because I, I told you guys, once I bring something up, I got to talk about it. So we're in the book of Acts. We're going to go get there quickly. Uh-oh, I didn't mean 153. I meant 15. Hit that, 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 that button too quick. And I... I want y'all to pay attention. Simeon is Simon Peter, the Apostle Peter. Simeon has related thoroughly how God, for the first time, turned his attention to the nations for the first time in this era, now, to take out of them a people for his name. We just had that conversation in the video I did yesterday. The people he takes out for his name. He turns his attention to the nations. It's no longer on fleshly individuals it's no longer on fleshly individuals don't take look don't take my word for it go back and read the scriptures for yourself but it says that he for the first time turned his attention because Jesus says i came not to anyone but the jews the lost children of israel he, that's who he came to talk to he said that but then you just heard us read where he says, I'm sending you to Jerusalem, Jamaria, uh, Samaria, and Judea, and to the most distant parts of the earth. So now he's going to the nations. He's going to, to the nations to take out of them a people for his name. But people read this part, after these things I will return and raise up again the tent of David that has fallen down, and I will rebuild its ruins and restore it. So that the men who remain may earnestly seek Jehovah together with the people of all the nations, the people who are called by, called by, called by my name, says Jehovah, who is doing these things. No, from a vote. This is a prophecy, ladies and gentlemen, and he is taking out a people for his name. But the people that he's bringing together in the rebuilding is spiritual, not physical. He's not restoring no physical temple. Remember, God does not live in man-made buildings. No building can contain him. He said it from the very beginning. He said he only allowed certain things because of them, because of their lack of understanding. So, yes, I know this conversation go on and on. And I know many of you guys got opinions. I know you won't believe me, but I refuse. Anyway, I know many of you have opinions. I know many of you want to shout and scream. I'm not the guy you're supposed to be shouting and screaming this to. Take it to him. He's This is his word. So if you got a problem with what I've shown you, don't come to me. Like I said, I'm not giving you my opinion. Go to him. Tell him, nope, you shouldn't have worded it that way. You should have explained it this way. Go ahead. Tell him that and see if he accepts it. Because I can't accept it. I can only accept what he says. He's not. I, I had a guy email me the other day telling me, about his understanding and his communication. Look, I don't care. I don't care what your communication, what your God is. That's not my concern. I'm not here to judge whether or not you have or don't have or should have or could have had. That's not my concern. My concern is my communication with God. My concern is doing everything in my power to complete my task and mission given to me by him. He has given me a commission. Just like Jesus says, hey, go therefore and make disciples of people of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, that's my job. I have to go to the nations and talk to them about Jehovah because I am a witness of Jehovah. I am a person who is called by his name. Okay? He has taken me out of the nations. I didn't ask him to do it. He did that on his own. But I'm okay because I wasn't doing all right as being one of the people of the nation. So I don't mind him taking me out. Oh, good. He took you out, huh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, those of you who remain here. I really, 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 really do appreciate 
the opportunity of having brought this information together. Now I'm going to go have a coconut smile and we will talk again. Have a good day, y'all.